grace and peace and welcome to University United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Joe Mead and I'm so happy you are here to worship with us. If you came online early on Sunday to watch our worship, you found it wasn't there. We were so excited about our outdoor service that we recorded it and posted it afterwards and we are going to continue to try uh, new ways of bringing you worship. And so there may be times where it is not there first thing on Sunday morning, but it will appear. We're glad you're here today. We're glad you're willing to be a part of us wherever you are. And we're so happy that God's love reaches out to each and every one of us every day of our lives. Welcome to university. Come in for worship. had our message about David. It was a, a message of um, kind of uh, being incredible in uh, finding power and assuming power and being given power. That all the voices came together and said, this, we want you to be our king. A, a, a unified tribes came together. And so we're going to continue the story of intrigue of now King David, how he has risen up through the ranks. He was anointed as a, a boy shepherd he was in Saul's house, Saul's death, Jonathan died, uh, and, and here he is now into this place. And so we talk about this as he comes into power and this incredible display that he has among his people. 
So will you join with me in this time of dancing and celebration as we hear more about David. Praise the Lord with the sounds of songs, lyres, harps, tambourines, castanets, and cymbals, a rich symphony of all that God has given us with which to lift our praise, our words, our time, our energy, and action, all given in acknowledgement of God's gracious and benevolent love to us given back to God in lavish faithfulness as we care for the world God made and all people whom God loves. We worship in music, prayer, and throughout today and by our discipline every single day. It is good to have you with worship. Hear this music now from our, our incredible bell choir that brings us such a diverse selection of music and this uh, that is a continued praise to God. Our scripture reading today picks up in the, the second book of Samuel, the sixth chapter, which I alluded to a little earlier, some of that that had happened uh, in between. And, and it's obvious with our time allotted, we cannot go through every detail of this story of uh, dynasty, of um, anointment, of uh, God's presence, even in times of difficulty, but those are part of the messages that we hear throughout all of this. And uh, we are probably uh, challenged to read between the lines here as we understand the complexity of human relationships um, in a story that is, is bigger than all of us. And so I pick up on the uh, sixth chapter, verses one through five, and then I will go to 12. 
David again assembled all picked men of Israel, 30,000 strong. Then David and all the troops that were about with him set out from Balaam of Judea to pick up from there the ark of God to which the name was attached, the name Lord of hosts enthroned on the cherubim. They loaded up the ark of God into a new cart and conveyed it to the, from the house of Abadab, which was on the hill. And Abadab's son, Yuza, and Aho guided the new cart. They conveyed it from Abadab's house, and Ahio walked in front of the ark. Meanwhile, David and all of the house of Israel danced before the Lord with the sounds of all kinds of cypress wood instruments, with lyres and harps, timbrels, sistrums, and cymbals. And then picking up on chapter 12, excuse me, on verse 12. The Lord has blessed Obadobin's house and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. Therefore, David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obadoam to the city of David amid rejoicing. When the bearers of the ark of the Lord had moved forward six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. David whirled with all of his might before the Lord. David was girthed with a linen ephod. Thus David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts and with blasts of the horn. As the ark of the Lord entered the city of David, Micah, the daughter of Saul looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and twirling before the Lord, and she despised him for it. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it up in its place inside the tent, which David had pitched for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of the host. And he distributed among all the people, the entire multitude of Israel, man and woman alike, to each a loaf of bread, a cake made in a pan, and a raisin cake. Then all the people left for their homes. The reading of this scripture came from the Jewish study Bible, that which is so important for us to understand from the perspective of where it was written. May God bless the reading of this word. We come now to offer our praise, our prayer to you, God. On this time where we come together in worship, it is always about praising you, of opening hearts, of offering in something beyond what we can understand in our own humanness. And so because of that, we turn to you and offer these words. O oh God of celebration, how you rejoice in your love for us. You take delight in our expression of love for you. You encourage us to go forth as your people of praise. Your joy is our strength. Your grace centered on us. Your glory fills our hearts, and we can celebrate our thanksgiving in music, singing, and dancing. Forgive us when we do not think that dancing is strange for the football player who just made the touchdown. Forgive us for thinking nothing of hands being raised and waved at a concert, and yet we judge and tut our tongues at other people's worship experience in such a way because of how it makes us think and feel. Forgive us when we hold back our expression of worship to you, fearful of what other people may think of us. Help us not to be a critical observer in how other people's worship affects us. Help us to be a joyful partaker in worshiping before you sincerely with our hearts. Help us to celebrate our fellowship with you and other people, genuinely, honestly, and openly. Help us praise in our thanksgiving to you, for you are our ever-loving God. We pray to you in your great glory. Amen. Hi, guys. Okay, so lately we've been talking a lot about our friend David, right? Like he's doing, he, we're going through his whole life story. He's doing so much right now. 
So we're going to talk about, <clears throat> we're going to switch it up a little bit and kind of talk about John the Baptist. Remember, he's the one that um, baptized Jesus in the river. So he's a really good guy. He's one of um, Jesus' disciples. Um, and Jesus talks to John the Baptist a lot. Well, something happens in the story, and we're going to talk about how sometimes we make bad decisions, right? Like even adults. Sometimes adults do things that aren't really right or what Jesus is asking of us. But the good thing is, is that Jesus is very forgiving and that we can talk to him and ask him for forgiveness. So that is something that I want us to remember when we do something we're not supposed to, that Jesus always always loves us even if we do something wrong right like he is going to forgive us all we have to do is ask so I want us to remember and I want us to pray so bow your heads and let's pray Jesus help me to see all the good things that you are doing and remember what you have done instead of thinking about only my problems amen so I want you to remember that prayer when you're having a rough day or you feel like mom and dad are doing something that you don't agree with. Maybe talk to them about, can we pray about this together? Isaac and I sometimes butt heads about whether or not he should have dessert at night. If he didn't finish your whole plate, then you probably shouldn't have dessert, right? That's, that's a big rule for us in our house. Well, sometimes he doesn't agree with it, but I say, you know what, let's, let's sit down and let's, let's pray on it. And usually... He starts to come around and understand that even though we don't get our way sometimes we're not we're not bad guys we're not bad guys there are so many so many things going on around us in the world and sometimes we have to really just take a second and step back and think Jesus is doing things for a reason and and maybe I don't understand that reason right now but we need to step back and think and remember the things that he has done and the things that he will do in our futures. Okay, happy Sunday, guys. I'm always just so in awe of the places that our creative uh, worship design team goes. The, the ideas, they, they help us to bring um, a real visual into what our scripture is about, what our message is about. And so here is a, a miniaturized uh, Ark of the Covenant, which I just touched, which would have been uh, a problem. Uh, but it's giving us an idea of how it would have been carried because you couldn't touch this part, cherubim on top of it, and how it would have been carried like that. And we've talked about this uh, over the summer because this is the, the Raiders of the Lost Ark, the Ark of the Lord, the Ark of the Covenant, that um, has been our tie-in for our summer blockbuster series. But of course, all those movies uh, point us to a greater message. And if we're willing to look at the historic pieces of it and find that these are messages that are important in our lives yet today. And so here's our, our message in this place that we're coming from today, that, that David made this choice to go get this and take it because he had seen that it had blessed another uh, community and so he did and as he's bringing it into the city of David his city and how he got it and again you need to go back and fill in all of the gaps that I can't uh, bring to you in at this time um, but he comes dressed in the, this linen garment the ephod which would have been a, um, it, it, in other times, this would have been a metal breastplate that would have been worn into battle. But this is linen, and so it's the priestly garb, the, the, the priestly uh, vestments of the time. And this is what he's coming into. And as he's coming into his city, he is dancing with a the tambourine, there's all sorts of music, going on and it says that he even kind of twirls around. Now, <clears throat> was he doing this out of great reverence and out of true joy? Maybe. But by this time, the wife, Michal, who had helped him um, escape from Saul, her father, in that household, and helped him escape, 
their relationship had soared, as in, I mean, soured, excuse me, soured, and, and just had gone downhill. So this is where I'm getting to this uh, idea of uh, the human condition keeps uh, coming up again and again and again in our stories, and that's why we do go to scripture, because all of these things that happen to all of us now have happened before, and they're part of all that we bring into all situations. And in her moment there, she is pretty much sneering at him. Now, there is a comment in one of the commentaries that said that, that he was wearing this, this linen e-pod, which breastplate, remember, so it's probably not real big, and that was all. So she might have had reason to be going, really, is this the way a king acts? as she's calling him into account. Now, David, if we remember the stories and we're getting to them, has other troubles as all of this goes along. And so we, we kind of ponder this from a political perspective with all of this very well gauged on his part, that he figured if he did this and then it would lead to this and then it lead to this, or or was there the hand of God guiding him, even in his pettiness, even in maybe some pretty sinister activities, maybe even in the discounting of people and lives. And as a shepherd, you know, we, we talked about that last week, that, that he was going to be the shepherd of the people, not top-down leadership, but embracing people where they are and learning from them and helping them along. And it does sound like he does that because he hands out all these cakes afterwards. So that, that was a good act to be able to do that. And, and it was taking him into a, uh, probably a place that, that uh, others hadn't been king and done these kinds of I, I think of when we, we uh, think of our political leaders today that, that certainly there have been times when eyebrows were raised and somebody did something that was not uh, presidential. I think I remember, you know, Bill Clinton uh, playing the saxophone, oh, that shouldn't have happened uh, kind of thing. Um, I, I know there's lots and lots of examples of that, but it was a connection to the people. And, and sometimes we want that, and then sometimes we're put off by that and say, no, 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 I want you to be at a higher level. I want you to be above that kind of stuff. I don't want to know that you do the twist. I want you to be regal into whatever regal is. So I think part of what this story is setting up for us is the human side of David. That David may not always make the healthiest choices for himself, <coughs> excuse me, or others. But he can still be used by the hand of God to do good things in the world. He's going to go on to write many, many songs, which we know as our psalms in uh, our scriptures. Now, whether he personally pinned them or had them made into music later, we, we don't know. But obviously, he was a man of many gifts, but perfection was not one of them. I want you to think about this in your own life, and I think that probably... I've got another birthday coming up, so I've been thinking about this. I share birthday time with several people here at the church, and so we all, you know, it kind of happens at once. And um, I think about our own choices we've made. Some of them have been great. Oh, my goodness. We've, we're happy to talk about those. But we don't know always who is the Mikhail saying, let me tell you something else. And here's the interesting things when we do self-reflection. We begin to realize that we have hurt people, intentionally or unintentionally. 
we have done wrong by them. Now, I know sometimes we have also been the bitter one and have pointed out to everyone else just how awful that person is. If you only knew the full story and how awful that is, talking and hurting someone else instead of trying to help make the world a better place. I think our challenge is to realize that we are in a situation of community and community is always going to be difficult. You know, if you could handpick the people that are on your island, how you might do things differently. And yet we all know that if there's been a time where suddenly you were thrown into another situation with these people that you thought everything was going to work out perfectly while you share this cabin for a week, or you, you go on vacation somewhere, or or they stay in your home, or you stay in their home, and then suddenly who we are shows up and it's not always great, and tensions arise. My hope for you is in hearing this message is two, twofold. That you remember to praise God every day you remember to open your heart in, in a way that, that maybe others around you are going to shake their heads about with such great abandon. And I don't know if it'll take a tambourine or jazz hands or what it will be for you, but that you truly embrace God. And maybe that is while you're out on a walk and you just pause and you see that little a bird or you see the little turtle there by the water and in that moment you say thank you God oh thank you for letting me be a part of a magical wonderful world when I slow down the other thing I'm going to ask you to do is stop complaining about somebody else whoever they are wherever they are whatever the situation is just stop just stop it really doesn't help the world to send out that negativity. Negativity. It doesn't help the world to add another layer of grime onto someone else's story. And instead, when that moment comes that you want to say that thing, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for letting me be a part of a world that has diversity a world that I always don't have to agree with, a world that has many people doing many things in many different ways, and just because they're different from me, it doesn't make them wrong. I want you to carry this arc of love, of grace, of hope, of forgiveness into your home. Share with those people and then you carry it out and you put it in the car as you drive the city streets. And then you carry it into the workplace. And it's grace and hope and love that you are carrying out because that's part of your praise of God everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. Friends, we are in this life together. Let's act like it. Let's act like we can praise God in openness and not judge each other about what it looks like. Let's open our hearts to being willing to see somebody else do something different, and it's okay. Let's be willing to dance with such freedom because God is so good, so good to you and to me. May you know it, may you feel it, may you resonate with it, may you glow, may it be so, amen.
And so once more, I accept the offerings that you make to University United Methodist Church. Those that come in through uh, digital giving, those that are sent in by snail mail, those that are electronic transfers, all of those things. All of your actions over the past week of praise, of hope, maybe of confession, all of these things we now dedicate to God. Will you join with me in the words that are found on your screen? God, the giver of all good things, worship is giving back to you and giving to one another. May we bring our sacrifice of praise, a living sacrifice, a fragrant offering, a generous heart. May our gift be acceptable and pleasing to you. Like King David, may we share our fellowship meal with one another in celebration of the presence of God indwelling in us. Bless each one of us and our gifts and accept them with grateful hearts what we are given. Amen. Now let us sing and praise mightily as we sing together, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. I'd just like to make the announcement about we will be having vacation Bible school. If children are interested in that, we'll have that information out for anyone that is seeing this in the, the Wichita community that would like to participate. So the light of Christ, this praise that we offer in a very real way for all of the world to be a part of. As we are sent out, I invite you to share with me in the 
God of celebration and sacrament. Send us out to dance before you, letting our joy be known, letting your love be shown, and your spirit directing our steps and keeping us in unity. Go in peace.